with 23 gold medals and 28 overall medals, uh, Michael Phelps is without a doubt the greatest Olympic athlete of all time. He holds seven world records, and at age 33, we don't really even know if he's done just yet. He stands six foot four, he's got a wingspan of six foot seven, and he wears size 14 flippers. So he definitely has a genetic edge on most people when it comes to the pool, but that's not what makes him great. In a 2008 Olympic uh, interview with uh, NBC, he told them that he has a diet consisting of 12,000 calories a day when he's training. Uh, But it's not his ginormous appetite that sets him apart. So what is it that makes Michael Phelps the greatest? How has he been able to achieve the highest level of excellence in his sport? Well, according to his swimming coach, Bob Bowman, he took his advice. He says, there can be no growth without discontent. Uh, Sociologist Daniel Chambliss once studied the habits of over 100 Olympians, and he wrote a paper in 1989 entitled The Mundanity of Excellence where he said that repeated, consistent habits can lead to excellence. Or as my dad once told me when I was 11 years old, repetition is the key to learning. Now, people see Michael Phelps, and they chalk up a lot of his success and his excellence to raw talent. And there's no doubt about it. He has plenty of talent, but that's not why he's successful. He started swimming at the age of seven, basically living in a pool since that time. Since his first Olympics in 2000, uh, he spends six hours a day training. He once went five straight years without missing a single day. According to her book, it's a bestseller. It's called Grit. Author Angela Duckworth says that the most successful artists, business people, and athletes aren't those who rely sheerly on talent, but those who are determined to work hard, put in the grind, in an ever-ending, persistent pursuit of excellence. And that's what we're talking about today. We've been in our core value series. It's called Key Ingredients. Our core values, it's how we do what we do. All of our core values are rooted in Scripture, and they're based on the life of Jesus. Uh, they also spell the acronym SAUS. Uh, it's service, authenticity, unity, creativity, and excellence. And that fifth core value is something that we aim for in everything that we do as the church and as believers in Jesus. Uh, no doubt. The word excellence probably brings up a million different interpretations. You've probably heard it throughout your life. So just so that we're on the same page today, uh, excellence doesn't mean perfection. It just means your very best. It's going all out and all in for what matters most in your life. For us as believers, uh, we don't strive for excellence to make our names known. We live for excellence because we believe in something bigger and better than ourselves. Now, we talked last week out of Colossians 3, which says, whatever you do, do unto the Lord, right? He's worth our best. He deserves our best. And that's why we have excellence as a core value. Whatever we do as followers of Jesus in our daily lives, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our communities, it's worth doing to the best of our ability. Hey, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or as Beethoven composed, or as Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth stopped to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. Sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? Paul wrote the early church in ancient Greece to encourage them to live lives of excellence and to finish the race that they had started. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 says this in verse 6. So we urged Titus, that was one of Paul's friends and disciples, just as he had earlier made a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel, since you excel, the root word of excellence, in everything, Check this out. In faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see also that you excel in this grace of giving. Jump down to verse 11, and it says this. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. Look, Paul is telling the early church, finish what you started. Don't give up. And be excellent in these things, faith, speech, knowledge, authenticity, love, and in particular, generosity. Now, we know the phrase, practice makes perfect, but I think it's more accurate to say, practice makes permanent. As Daniel Chambliss said, uh, repeated, consistent habits can lead to excellence. Listen, whatever you make priority in your life will become the habits that shape how you live. So, how do you grow in excellence in faith? Well, you trust God in the little things and ask him to help you in your unbelief. 
How do you excel in speech? You speak life and encouragement over others. You speak the promises of God out of scripture over your own life. How do you excel in knowledge? Study the Bible. Read books that challenge your faith. Never stop learning. How do you excel in authenticity? Be real. Uh, Be real with God. Be real with each other. Be real with yourself. Be more transparent in your life. Come to God as you are and ask him to transform you from the inside out. How do you excel in love? Well, you serve others in the community, in the church. Give of yourself and ask God daily on how he can use you for his glory. How do you excel in generosity? Well, you got to find ways to give. Give your time, give your talent, and give your treasure. Listen, Paul's ministry was funded by the very churches that he was planting. He planted 14 churches throughout the New Testament. He was also, by trade, a tent maker, so you could say that Paul was the first bivocational pastor. Uh, We have a lot of missional dreams here at Bridges. And the way that we live out that calling to be a church that blesses our community is through generosity. Yeah, I want to encourage you, if you believe that Bridges is going to be the church where you plug in, pray about giving towards something here at Bridges. Listen, tithing is, is one of these biblical principles where the people of God would give of their first 10% to the ministry to fuel what the church was doing in that day and age. Tithing is trusting God with 90%, believing he can do more with that than we can do on our own with 100%. This isn't a message on giving, uh, but I do think it's something that Paul cared enough about to single out in this passage in 2 Corinthians. Jesus even takes it a step further when it comes to generosity. He says this in Luke 6, 38. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. This part is huge right here. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Hey, let's excel in the things that God cares about. Three things I want us to think about when it comes to excellence. If you're taking notes this morning, you can write these things down. Uh, Number one, excellence without integrity is worthless. When it comes to excellence, few people set the standard uh, in the Bible in leadership, heart, shepherding, and songwriting like David did. In fact, it was David who wrote Psalm 33 verse 3 that says, play skillfully before the Lord. Uh, The term skillfully there in Hebrew is this word yatab, which means whatever you do, make it beautiful to God. And it's used 115 different times in the Bible. So it's something we got to pay attention to. Uh, Now, David was the second king in the history of Israel. You may remember that Saul was the first king. And on the outside, Saul had it all together. He was tall. In fact, the Bible tells us he was a head taller than everyone else. He was good looking. He had all the qualities and characteristics that most people would look for in a king. Oh, but David, David had heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7 says, The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Psalm 78, verse 72 actually tells us just how David went down as the greatest king in the Old Testament. It says, And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, and with skillful hands he led them. David led the people of Israel with both integrity and excellence. And that's why he was the greatest. He was the goat. Have you ever met somebody that is so gifted, so talented, but they have no character? They'll always be limited in the way that they reach people. Hey, if they're sitting next to you, don't look at them right now. Integrity is something that stands out. Talent you can find most anywhere. One of my prayers early on as I began to travel playing music all across the country was this. God, don't let my talent take me where my character can't sustain me. Talent may get you in the door, but it's character that will keep you in the room. John Wimber, one of the founding members of Vineyard, uh, the church and great music movement, wrote this. The real test in these days will not be the writing and producing of great worship music. The real test will be the godliness and the character of those who deliver it. Excellence without integrity is worthless. Number two, be excellent in community. Excellence just for the sake of excellence doesn't build much, but when you do it for others, with others, helping others, it leaves legacy. Hey, when you excel, others excel. And when others excel, you excel. As a dad, I hope my kids accomplish way more than I ever do in this lifetime. I want to see Moses and Nora go much farther than anything I accomplish. And we see that in the Bible. In the book of Exodus, 
It was Moses that led the children of Israel to the promised land, but it was Joshua who took them in. We read on in the Old Testament, it was David who had this grand vision from God to build him a temple, but it was his son Solomon who actually built it. In the Gospels, we see Jesus lay a foundation for the early church, and it was the disciples that brought it about. Jesus led with excellence to see others excel. People often settle for mediocrity when there's no one pushing them onto greatness. Let me say that again. People often settle for mediocrity when there's no one pushing them on to greatness. Michael Jordan, come on, you know I couldn't get through this message without MJ. Michael Jordan wasn't the greatest basketball player of all time simply because he scored more points or he made more steals or he starred in better films. Definitely wasn't for that last one. He made everyone else better on the court that he played with. And that's why Michael Jordan was the greatest. Side note, champions aren't made on the playing field. They're made on the practice field. Excellence is made when no one else is watching. Hebrews 10.24 says this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let's encourage one another towards excellence in every area of our lives. In grace, we can encourage one another towards greatness, especially in the area of discipleship. And model that for people that don't yet know Jesus be excellent in community. Number three is this, consistency is key. Be consistent in the habits that bring you closer to Jesus. A reading the Bible, your prayer life, your worship life, how you serve others. I've told this story before, but when I was 11 years old, my parents enrolled me in piano lessons. And like most 11-year-old, I would have rather been outside playing street hockey or trading baseball cards. And so they told me, if you practice for an hour a day, we'll pay you 10 bucks a week. Come on, in the 90s, that was jackpot, okay? And so I got on the piano, I began to practice for an hour a day. And maybe you've heard of Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule. Whoever does anything for 10,000 hours will eventually become an expert in that field. I don't know if I hit 10,000 hours, but uh, there were a lot of days and nights spent at that piano. And I, I got to a place where I could actually make some halfway decent sounds come out of a piano. And I made a huge mistake when I was 13. I'd been playing for two years. I told my parents, you don't have to pay me anymore. I could have made so much more money off of mom and dad. But I began to love what I was doing. Now I've written over 1,200 songs, played nearly 1,000 live shows, produced 60 albums, and it all goes back to an 11-year-old who practiced for an hour a day because consistency is key. Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. What is the decision that you need to make today to set the wheels in motion for excellence Excellence in our spirit, excellence in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, you cannot have the word disciple without the root word, root word, uh, discipline. What is a spiritual discipline that you can put into practice today that will become a habit in your life that draws you deeper into your relationship with God? I'd encourage you, find a Bible reading plan on YouVersion and stick to it. Uh, Pick up a book that challenges your faith. Start a prayer schedule. Maybe get up early in the mornings and spend time with God before you get into your day. Those who know God the best are those who spend the most time with him. Maybe start a prayer journal to keep track of how God answers your prayers and how he moves in your life. Don't delay. Put it into motion. You don't have to wait till January 1st to start a new practice in your spiritual life. James 4, 17 As I close, it says this, if anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. It's never too late to be here you're meant to be. Don't put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Consistency is key. So let's be excellent and help encourage those around us to do the same. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful uh, that you give us the Holy Spirit in order to live lives of excellence. God, help us to excel in faith, in generosity, in speech, in knowledge, in love, and in authenticity. Help us to excel at the things that you care about, God. God, would you challenge us through this word? Can we dive deep into Psalm 33, verse 3, that says, place skillfully before the Lord. Whatever we do unto God, may we make it beautiful to you. God, we are so grateful for your son, Jesus Christ. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's because of your great love for us that we want to reciprocate that with lives of excellence. 
And as I pray this morning, I don't want to miss the opportunity that if there's anybody here this morning who the things that I'm sharing, they've been stirring your spirit and you don't know what it is or who it's towards. And I'm here to tell you it's towards Jesus. If you don't yet know the Son of God, this is your morning to begin living your best life. He has nothing but amazing things for you. In fact, he says in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I just want to pray for you. Just from wherever you're sitting, you can just raise up a hand. Every eye is closed. Every head is bowed in this place. Amen. Lord, let your spirit sweep across this room. A spirit that unifies us in the hope and love of Jesus Christ. God, we do everything for you and in you. Thank you for your son who died for us, who lived a life worth mimicking. That's why we call ourselves Christians, to be Christ-like. So thank you, Jesus. Amen.